More on both in a bit. Also, high school playoffs in Doña Ana County. We're going to get to that in just a moment. Good evening to you. I'm Paul Cicala. But first, let's talk some UTEP basketball. The Miners came into this afternoon's game with an outside shot at a tie for the Conference USA title. Meanwhile, Socorro was hoping to rebound from a 49-zip loss to Coronado. Bienvenidos a su noticiero con la mayor información local. In Espanol. Game time is set for 5.30 p.m. Fans are rushing in. Now, I might add that they were expecting and hoping for a sellout, but at this point, I am getting confirmation that there are still 2,000 tickets remaining for this big game. So, come on, El Paso. You wanted the Conference USA tournament. You have to support the local teams. On the men's end, we have Rafael Nadal. And on the women's end, we have Yelena Yankovic. Let's get this. 95-0, to back-to-back -back shutouts. Back to you. Uh and the shooting extended beyond that busy intersection here in South Juarez. One innocent bystander was actually hit by a bullet in the foot. She was working at this quesadilla stand. As you can see, this is just one example of the many bullet holes. Governor Richardson tells me all of New Mexico can take pride in mind that bird. Well, here in El Paso, Nolan Richardson needs no introduction. He was born and raised in the Segundo Barrio and went to Bowie High School where he played basketball, baseball, and football. Texas has jumped up the rankings. In today's AP poll, the Longhorns leaped over Alabama to snag number two. Whew. It's no secret, the most popular sport here in Bolivia and in all of Latin America is soccer. And as you can see, most of the basketball courts that you'll find right here in Bolivia are oftentimes old and run down. And it's actually more common to see people playing soccer on them. <laughs> Correction, there is one more person that'll be added to that long list, me. <laughs> wow, now I know what it's like for all the winners. Okay, smart guy. Who is the minor coach of the only minor team ever to be ranked in the AP Top 25? That is kind of a tough one. I, hey, Coach Price, I, I, my Price! And who do you turn to for the best UTEP coverage? Easy, ABC7. Hey, Raul, and you are right. It was a battle for basketball border bragging rights. Reportando desde Palm Desert, Paul Cicala, Cuna Noticias, Telemundo. It's a matter of life and death. Emergency crews deal with it all the time. It's called the golden hour. Once they get a call, boom, they're out the door. Within a minute, fire crews are en route to saving lives, but sadly, sometimes traffic gets in the way. Mayfield certainly had La Cueva High School's number. I'm wearing this purple colored tie because Raul made me do it. That's right. He twisted my arm. Purple the color of Texas Christian, of course. Still the hot topic of conversation seemed to focus more on the allegations against Kobe Bryant and less on his play on the courts. Most of the cocaine that passes through Ciudad Juarez and ultimately goes through El Paso and the rest of the United States is from right here in the country of Colombia. This area in West Juarez, about a mile from El Paso, Texas, is one of the most dangerous sections of the city. As players from both Miami and Notre Dame learned, the Sun Bowl was more like the Snow Bowl. And get this, at kickoff, it was 36 degrees here in El Paso, and it took crews about 90 minutes to clear all of the snow off the field. But once they did, it was all Notre Dame. Now, Christina was born on 9-11, September 11th, 2001. I'm literally retracing the steps of the six and eight year old kids this morning. They were headed north across Fort Lowell on their way to school. Obviously there was a lot of traffic in the morning as people headed to work and also took their kids to school. Now the eight year old, he was able to make it across the street, but sadly the six year old wasn't so fortunate. He was struck and hit in this area here, just a few inches from the curve. And it won't get any easier for the San Diego Chargers, that's for sure. That's because it's their last game on this very field right here at Qualcomm Stadium. Paul Sakala joins us from the Strip live with more. Paul? Well, this is a current events issue that most people seem to have an opinion about. After making it inside, Bob Sumrall found a cabin full of wood and other combustible material. He was hoping to start a fire in this stove, obviously throwing the wood inside. Now, the owner of the cabin tells us that this lighter isn't hers. It was actually his, but unfortunately, it didn't work. It was a matchup that you saw right here on ABC7. And if you like KVIA, please raise your hand. How about you, Rajon Rondo? Yeah, I like KVIA, ABC7. Yep, 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 yep. 
Thanks a lot, Rajan. You can put your hand down. Will that positive energy continue despite the violence? We certainly hope so. 28 people were shot in and outside of this home here in Juarez. Sadly, more than half ended up dying. The fans obviously felt very safe. And as you can see, many of the people here in Juarez finally have something to smile about on this special night when the Mexican national team played right here in Ciudad Juarez. In fact, the Russian star tells me she is feeling more than confident right here at the BNP Paribas Open. And as we speak, we might see an upset. Houston is leading by three points. Now it's time to change gears a bit to hoop it up at the Don Haskins Center. It was the first matchup for the Miners in the new Tim Floyd era. Whether it be wrestling, whether it be the ground and pound, whether it be jiu-jitsu, or whether it be striking, you got to be up to date and ready to go every second. Otherwise, you might get knocked out. Now to put things into perspective, the 22,000 seat terrace dedicated to Dale Earnhardt has the same seating capacity as Madison Square Garden in New York. Now it is raining confetti as USC has won its third straight Rose Bowl. Well, today a familiar face from Channel 13 will appear on Oprah. Action News reporter Paul Sakala, reporter on this story. Yeah, well, the sad reality is most people that I talked to were, were outraged. Um, and as a journalist, you have to be objective. You have to find both sides. The Miners just knocked off Tulsa literally just a few minutes ago in the building that you see right behind me. We are talking the Don Haskins Center. <laughs> October was the deadliest month ever here in Ciudad Juarez. More than 350 murders in all. Just imagine, to put that into perspective, that's more than 11 per day. A group of teenagers stole a car from a nearby home and then they took it on a joyride. But unfortunately, as they were going around the corner, they ran through this wall here. And that's not all that happened. Take a look at the trailer itself. As you can see, the car ran right into the bedroom of the mobile home. It's an amazing story. Three athletes from the war-torn country of Serbia making it to the semifinals of the Pack Life Open. First, meet little Andrew. Andrew's only eight years old. He's the youngest boxer here. And Andrew, let's see what you got. As you can see, he's a knockout. And the celebration has begun. Many people, in fact, have come from their homes or from the bars or many other places, and they're all filtering downtown here in Phoenix. The celebration is on. The Diamondbacks are World Series champions. Oh, and what a dream it is for any male reporter, having the opportunity to be surrounded by a bunch of cheerleaders. Or is it a dream? I'm not sure. Oh, 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 I'm out of here. Reporting from Del Valle High School and trying to make an escape of my own. Paul Sicala, ABC7. Oh man. It's Paul, you cold out there? I am very cold. As you can see, Raul, it is still snowing as we speak. But in a stunning story of survival, an El Paso man avoids death for six days here in the Gila National Forest. I'm Paul Sicala, and we'll retrace his steps.